Playing with Power MTG now has a Patreon. When you support us on Patreon, you can get early access to deck lists, videos, and Patreon only videos like commentary, raw footage, and more. Check out the link in the description below and subscribe today. Playing with Power is also supported by Flipside Gaming. When you use the promo code POWER in all caps, you get 10% off orders, $10 or more. It saves you money and helps us out at the same time. Finally, please subscribe to us on social media. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook. Check out the description below and subscribe today. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Another round is here and we have some interesting gameplay in store. So let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan playing Jora, Weatherlight Captain. Labeled as Adaptive Storm, this deck is a build from one of our fans. They said we could pilot it for one of our episodes, so we sleeved it up and we will see what it can do. Ryan's opening hand consists of a Preordain, Volcanic Island, Wooded Foothills, Shivan Reef, Wheel of Fortune, Ancient Tomb, and a Mana Ball. Next, we have Garrett bringing back Tassiker the Golden Fang. This deck abuses the graveyard to gain value and pull ahead of its opponents. Garrett's opening hand consists of a Demir Signet, Overgrown Tomb, Life from the Loam, Muddle the Mixture, Life and Death, a Forest, and a Mystic Remora. After that, we have Folger bringing back Thrasios, Triton Hero, and Vile Smasher the Fierce. Four Color Rashmi grinds out value to pull ahead and secure a victory. Folger's opening hand consists of a Soul Ring, Flusterstorm, Preordain, Deathrite Shaman, Birds of Paradise, an Island, and a Command Tower. Finally, we have Mike playing his favorite commander pairing of Timna the Weaver and Thrasios Triton Hero. A grindier version of Paradox Scepter, this deck adds a sub-theme of wheel effects combined with Notion Thief and Narset. His opening hand consists of a Mana Confluence, Marsh Flats, Imperial Seal, Carpet of Flowers, Mox Diamond, Nature's Claim, and a Dispel. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Garrett wins the Chubby Bunny Challenge and gets to start us off. Garrett plays a Forest for turn. He casts a Mana Vault. He taps his vault to cast a Demir Signet. He uses his remaining floating to tap Demir Signet and cast a Mystic Remora. All set up for success, Garrett passes to Ryan. Ryan plays a Volcanic Island for turn. He casts a Preordain, Scrying 2, and drawing a card. He passes. Mike plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He taps his Confluence to cast Carpet of Flowers. He moves to his second main phase, adding a blue through his carpet. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Marsh Flats. He then casts his Commander, Thrasios. He ends his turn. Folger plays a command tower and then casts Deathrite Shaman. He gives the turn to Garrett. During his upkeep, Garrett pays for his Mystic Remora. He plays an island for turn. He casts a search for Ascanta and ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan plays a Steam Vents, untapped, taking two life. He casts a Mana Crypt. After that, he casts his commander, Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. All through, he ends his turn. In his main phase, Mike adds two blue through his carpet of flowers. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Notion Thief. He attacks Garrett with Thrasios and ships the turn over to Folger. Folger plays an Island for turn. He casts a Soul Ring. He activates his Death Rite, exiling Marsh Flats from Mike's Graveyard and adding to green. He uses that mana to cast Birds of Paradise. He passes. Garrett lets his Remora die on his upkeep. Also during his upkeep, his Search for Ascanta triggers and he mills Chain of Vapor after looking at the top card. In his main phase, he casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Overgrown Tomb. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He taps his Tomb, taking two life to cast Life from the Loam. He returns Overgrown Tomb to his hand and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and loses three life. He plays a Shivan Reef for turn. He casts Pyroblast, targeting Mike's Notion Thief. He plays a Mana Ball for turn. Next, he casts Fabricate. In response, Garrett casts Muddle the Mixture, countering the spell. After that, he casts Wheel of Fortune. Folger responds by casting Flusterstorm, countering the spell as well. Ryan attacks Folger with Joyra and passes the turn. In his main phase, Mike adds two black through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts Timna the Weaver. He attacks Garrett with Thrasios. He pays one life and draws a card off of Timna's ability. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Ponder, looking at the top three, rearranging, and drawing a card. He plays a Windswept Heath and ends his turn. On his turn, Folger casts a Preordain, scrying two and drawing a card. Next, he casts Sig, River Cutthroat. He gives the turn to Garrett. 
During his upkeep, Garrett looks at the top card through his search for Ascanta and decides to keep it there. He plays a Cephalid Colosseum for turn. He taps both Ancient Tomb and the Colosseum and floats all the rest of his mana and casts Dramatic Reversal. Dramatic Reversal resolves and he untaps all of his non-land permanents. He taps again and uses his mana to cast Razaketh, the Foul-Blooded. Next, he casts Life. Everyone knows that this is the end of the game, so in response, Mike cracks his windswept heat to fetch up a tropical island. He then casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Razaketh. Garrett's Razaketh gets bounced, and he sacks a land and copies Chain of Vapor and targets Folger's sick River Cutthroat. Folger responds by paying two life and casting Mental Misstep, targeting the Chain of Vapor copy. Plans all but thwarted, the copy is countered. Next, Garrett delves away some of his graveyard to cast his commander, Tassiger the Golden Fang. He passes his turn. Ryan plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He casts a Rhystic Study. He passes. In his main phase, Mike adds two white through his carpet of flowers. He plays a Yava Mayakos for turn. He casts Imperial Seal. He loses two life and searches up a card onto the top of his library. He activates his Thrasios, revealing what he searched, which was a Mystic Remora. He taps his mana confluence to cast his newly acquired Mystic Remora. After a lot of bargaining and reasoning among the table, the fish resolves. Mike ends his turn. Folger plays a Windswept Heath for turn. He pays two life and casts a Chaxian Probe, targeting Mike, paying the Rhystic Tax. He looks at Mike's hand and draws a card. Next, he casts his commander, Vile Smasher of the Fierce. He taps his Deathrite Shaman, exiling Windswept Heath from Mike's graveyard to cast Keen Sense onto his Vile Smasher. All through, he passes. During his upkeep, Garrett's search for Ascanta triggers and he mills a Scalding Tarn. During his draw step, he dredges three to return life from the loam to his hand. He plays an overgrown tomb into play untapped, taking two life. He casts life from the loam. He passes. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan cracks his wooded foothills for a mountain. Ryan then casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Mike's Mystic Remora. Ryan plays an ancient tomb for turn. He casts Gamble. He searches up a card and then discards a card at random, which is an Aether Flux Reservoir. Ryan taps his ancient tomb to help cast Paradox Engine. A Jorah trigger goes onto the stack, and Folger responds by cracking his windswept teeth to fetch up a breeding pool into play untapped, taking two life. He then casts Counterspell, targeting the engine. File Smasher's trigger goes onto the stack, and Ryan responds by casting Muddle the Mixture, targeting Counterspell. Garrett decides to activate Tassiger, hoping to do something about the engine, milling the top two, and then letting Mike choose. Mike chooses Simic Signet. Muddle the Mixture counters the spell. Vile Smasher resolves and hits Ryan for two. Keen Senses Trigger goes onto the stack and resolves, and Folger draws a card. Ryan draws a card through Joyra, and the Paradox Engine resolves. Ryan casts Everflowing Chalice for zero to kick off the engine triggers and untaps all of his non-land permanents. He casts an Aether Spell Bomb. He sacks the Spell Bomb to draw a card. He pays two life and casts a Taxian Probe, targeting Mike. He casts a Lotus Petal. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get going like he wanted, and he didn't get the draws he needed so he ships the turn to Mike. Mike adds two white through his carpet of flowers. He casts Smothering Tide. He plays an underground river for turn and passes. During Folger's draw step, he draws a card and pays for the Smothering Tide. He casts a Mystic Remora. File Smasher's trigger resolves and hits Ryan for one. Folger then draws a card off of Keen Sense. Folger plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He casts a Chrome Mox, paying the Rhystic Tax, and imprints Massacre under it. After that, he passes. During Garrett's upkeep, his search for Ascanta trigger goes onto the stack. Folger responds by casting Winds of Rebuke, targeting Mike's Smothering Tide. His Vile Smasher trigger goes onto the stack and so does Ryan's Rhystic Study. Mike responds by casting Dispel. Folger's Mystic Remora trigger goes onto the stack as well as another Rhystic Study trigger. Mike doesn't pay for the Rhystic Study, Ryan draws a card, Smothering Tithe triggers, Mike gets a treasure, Mike doesn't pay the Mystic Remora, Folger draws a card, Smothering Tide triggers again, Mike gets another treasure, Dispel counters Winds of Rebuke, Folger doesn't pay for the Rhystic Study, Smothering Tide triggers yet again, Mike gets yet another treasure, Vile Smasher resolves, hits Garrett for two, the Keen Sense trigger goes onto the stack and resolves, Folger draws a card, Smothering Tide triggers one more time, Mike gets yet another treasure, and finally, after all that, Garrett resolves his search for Azkanta, milling Dispel, and transforming it into Azkanta the Sunken Ruin. During his draw step, Garrett judges three to return life from the loam to his hand. Now, finally in his main phase for the turn, Garrett plays a Scalding Tarn. 
He cracks it for a breeding pool into play untapped, taking two life. He sacrifices his Cephalid Colosseum to draw three and discard three. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Paradox Engine. Next, he casts Copy Artifact. The Paradox trigger goes onto the stack as well as the Rhystic Study and the Mystic Remora. He doesn't pay for either, each of them draw a card, and Mike gets two treasures. Copy Artifact resolves and enters as a copy of Paradox Engine. The Legend Rule goes into effect and he discards his original Paradox Engine. He casts a Simic Signet. Garrett activates Tassiger. He bargains with Folger, asking him to give him Nature's Claim so he can deal with Ryan's Paradox Engine. Folger decides to let him have the Nature's Claim. He casts his Nature's Claim, targeting Ryan's Paradox. Paradox Engine, Rhystic Study, and Mystic Remora triggers goes onto the stack. Mike responds by casting a Nature's Claim of his own, targeting Folger's Mystic Remora. Another Mystic and Rhystic go onto the stack. Mike doesn't play the Mystic, but does pay the Rhystic, and he gets another treasure from the Tithe. Nature's Claim resolves, Mystic Remora dies, and Folger gains 4 life. Ryan sacks his Lotus Petal for a blue and casts Swan Song, targeting Garrett's Nature's Claim. His own engine gun tap goes onto the stack, and Mike responds by casting Brainstorm, adding another Rhystic to the stack. He doesn't pay, Ryan draws a card, Mike gets a treasure, then he draws three, puts two back on top, and passes priority. Ryan's Paradox resolves, and he floats mana from his rocks. Then Swan Song resolves, and then Nature's Claim is countered. Garrett activates Tassiger again, targeting Folger, asking him once again for the Nature's Claim. The rest of the group sees what is starting to happen and knows that Garrett could probably blow up all of the artifacts and enchantments if they let him. Garrett bargains again, saying he's just trying to get rid of the Paradox Engine. Folger gives him Nature's Claim again. Garrett then casts Nature's Claim, targeting Folger's Keen Sense. After the ultimate betrayal in Magic's history, Paradox and Rhystic Study Trigger goes onto the stack, and Folger responds by cracking his Misty Rainforest, fetching up a Watery Grave into play untapped, taking two life. He casts Narset's Reversal, targeting Garrett's Nature's Claim. Another Study Trigger goes onto the stack, Folger doesn't pay, Ryan draws a card, and he pays for Smothering Tithe with some of his floating mana so Mike doesn't get a treasure. Narset's Reversal resolves, copying Nature's Claim, targeting Garrett's Paradox Engine. Nature's Claim resolves, Garrett's Engine is destroyed, he gains 4 life, Rhystic Study resolves, and Ryan draws a card, and pays for the Smothering Tithe with more of his floating mana, and finally, Garrett's Paradox Engine trigger resolves, and he untaps. He activates Tassiger again, this time targeting Mike. Everyone is in on his game, so Mike gives him Lana or Elves. He activates Tasker again, targeting Folger. Folger gives him Swan Song. Finally, Garrett casts Nature's Claim, targeting Ryan's Paradox Engine. He doesn't pay the Rhystic Tax, Ryan draws, Mike gets a treasure, and the Paradox Engine is finally destroyed. The battle finally won, Garrett passes the turn. Ryan plays an Inventor's Fair for turn. He casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Staring down a ton of treasures that are about to be destroyed, Mike responds by sacking some of his treasures to activate Thrasios, scrying and revealing a bayou. He activates Thrasios again, scrying and revealing a Birds of Paradise. He activates Thrasios for the third time, scrying and revealing a Negate. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast a Negate, paying the Rhystic Tax. With that, the Rift is countered, and Ryan ends his turn. In his main phase, Mike adds three blue through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts a Grim Monolith. He follows up with the Talisman of Dominance. He ships the turn to Folger. Folger plays a Forbidden Orchard for turn. He casts Legacy's Allure. Vile Smasher's trigger goes onto the stack as well as Rhystic Steady. He pays the Rhystic Tax, then Vile Smasher resolves, hitting Ryan for two. Keen Sense triggers and Folger draws a card, and Mike gets a treasure. Next, he activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Garrett's Dramatic Reversal out of his graveyard, making each opponent lose two life. After that, he passes. In his draw step, Garrett judges three to return Life from the Loam to his hand. He casts Life from the Loam, returning three lands from his graveyard to his hand. He plays a Cephalid Colosseum. He sacrifices his Colosseum to draw three and discard three. He replaces his first draw with a Dredge to get back Life from the Loam. He draws the other two and discards three. He casts Lanawar Elves for turn and passes. On his turn, Ryan taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Tezzeret the Seeker. Folger responds by casting Red Elemental Blast. His Vile Smasher trigger and Ryan's Rhystic go onto the stack. Garrett responds by tapping his own Ancient Tomb to help cast Reality Shift, targeting Vile Smasher. Folger responds by casting Swan Song, targeting Reality Shift. 
Garrett responds by casting his own copy of Swan Song, targeting Folger's Swan Song. Folger responds again by casting Dispel, targeting Garrett's Swan Song. Mike decides he needs to intervene, so he activates Thrasios, scrying, and revealing Mana Drain. He casts his Mana Drain, targeting Folger's Swan Song to ensure no one gets a bird. He taps his Mana Confluence to pay the Ristic Tax. Mana Drain counters Swan Song, Dispel counters Swan Song, Reality Shift exiles Vile Smasher, Folger manifests the top card of his library, Vile Smasher's trigger resolves, hits Ryan for one, and Red Elemental Blast counters Tezzeret the Seeker. Next, Ryan taps Shiv and Reef to cast Mystic Remora. In response, Mike activates Thrasios, scrying and revealing a Tundra. He does it again, revealing the City of Brass. He does it a third time, revealing an Avacyn's Pilgrim. After that, the Remora resolves. Ryan casts a Helm of Awakening. He follows up with a Chromatic Star. He casts an Urza's Bauble. He casts a Springleaf Drum. He follows up with a Voltaic Key. He then casts a Lodestone Bauble. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Baral under it. He casts a Codex Shredder. He plays a Cephalid Colosseum for turn. He sacks the Colosseum to draw three and discard three. He plays a Soul Ring. After that, he casts Rebuild. Knowing that's what Artifact Storm does to keep hitting, Mike activates Thrasios, hoping to find an answer. He scries to the bottom and reveals the top, which is the best card you could scry, a Dovin's Veto. He casts Dovin's Veto, targeting Rebuild. Knowing Dovin's Veto can't be countered, Ryan casts Force of Will. He holds priority and exiles a blue card from his hand to cast Misdirection, redirecting the Dovin's Veto to his own Force of Will. The table hits an uproar at the play, and Mike must now think of an out. He activates Thrasios, scrying and revealing a Priest of Titania. He activates Thrasios again. He thinks for a long time whether or not to scry the card to the bottom. He decides to scry to the bottom, hoping to reveal what would be better, and he reveals a Verdant Catacombs. Misdirection resolves, Force of Will fizzles, Dovin's Veto fizzles, and Mike then casts his own Force of Will, targeting Rebuild. With that, Rebuild is countered, and Ryan decides to pass the turn. Mike starts off his turn by attacking Ryan with Timna. Folger responds by tapping his Forbidden Orchard for mana, giving Ryan a 1-1 blocker so Mike cannot draw a card. He uses that mana to cast a Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Cyclonic Rift onto the top of his library. Ryan blocks with his Spirit. In his second main phase, Mike activates Thrasio, scrying and revealing a Windfall. He casts his newly found Windfall. Ryan responds by activating a Codex Shredder, targeting Folger's Cyclonic Rift. Windfall resolves, and everyone discards their hands and draws 9. Garrett decides to dredge his life from the loan back instead of one of his draw. With everyone's draw, Mike gets 35 treasures from Smothering Tithe. Mike casts a Paradox Engine. Mystic and Ristic go onto the stack. Folger responds by casting Force of Will. Mike responds by casting Counterspell. He pays the Ristic, gets a treasure from the Mystic, Force of Will is countered, he pays the Ristic again, and gets a treasure from the Mystic again, and the Paradox Engine resolves. He casts a Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Silence onto the top of his library. He activates Thrasios, scrying and revealing his Silence. He casts Silence, paying both the Ristic and the Mystic. Silence resolves, and no one else can cast spells for the rest of the turn. He casts Enlightened Tutor to fetch up Sensei's top onto the top of his library. He activates Thrasios to get his top. He casts his Sensei's top. He flips his top to draw a card. He casts Chrome Mox and imprints a card. He now has enough mana through Paradox and Sensei's top to draw his entire deck, so he does. He casts an Angel's Grace, preventing him from losing the game this turn. He casts a Regrowth, targeting Brainstorm in his graveyard. He casts Brainstorm, putting two cards from his hand back onto the top of his library. He casts Windfall, making sure everyone discards their entire hands and draws dozens of cards because of Mike's hand. And to be sure he gets everyone, he casts Yogmaw's Will and casts Windfall again. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to say, that game was insane. Mike is the winner by controlling the board, grinding value, and waiting for the perfect opportunity to go off. Big props to Garrett, Folger, and Ryan, whose decks were all duking it out and trying to claw their way to the top. A big thanks to Velvet Vendetta for his Jorah decklist. Check it out in the description below. If you have a deck you would like us to pilot on the show, we are now taking submissions. We've added a link in the description for you to submit your decks. Patreons get priority selection, so consider subscribing. 
Any tier is eligible, so sign up today. That about does it for this game. Please tune in next time as we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.